All right, well, good morning, everyone. Uh, it is a pleasure to be back at a State of the Map conference. This is my first State of the Map US. So thanks for having me, and thanks to the organizers for putting it on. Um, we heard this morning how difficult it was uh, with everything that's happened over the last few years. My name is Eduardo. I am here representing Meta, talking about uh, an end-to-end -end look at op uh, pedestrian infrastructure in OpenStreetMap. Um, I've been involved with OpenStreetMap for about seven years now. Um, it's just a pleasure to be working in this community. So I want to talk today about pedestrian infrastructure. It's something that I'm pretty passionate about. I spoke about it last year at the online conferences of Phosphor G and State of the Map. Uh, so if you go back to 2021, I was talking about uh, mapping pedestrian infrastructure, but particularly looking at five different cities. I looked at Folsom in the United States, I looked at Heidelberg in Germany, Melbourne in Australia, I looked at uh, Stonetown in Tanzania, and Yesan in South Korea. These are cities with like very different characteristics, different populations, different levels of economic development, different cultural backgrounds, but all of them uh, basically had the same thing where the data in OpenStreetMap did not necessarily mirror what was on the ground. Um, so we can do a lot better to map pedestrian infrastructure, but also that uh, the infrastructure itself can be improved. And I think that's true in most cities around the world, pedestrian infrastructure is neglected. So yeah, here, here is uh, here's Folsom. Um, this is where I've been living since uh, January last year when I moved to the United States. So I was actually living here in this particular spot for about a month when I moved to the United States. And even just going out to get groceries, like walking 200 meters um, to get groceries was a bit of a pain. Like it was all designed for cars, even if the grocery store was just across the road. And that was very like interesting for me. And I started thinking a lot more about pedestrian infrastructure and how the tools that you know I work with daily and that a lot of you guys work with daily can be used to make pedestrian infrastructure better. So there's a lot of tags related to pedestrian data, like the obvious stuff is, is listed here. I don't know how well you can see it, but we're talking things like sidewalks, we're talking things like crosswalks. Um, this is a near Folsom Prison, which you might know from the Johnny Cash song um, and, and the dam itself. Really nice suburbia, got really good sidewalks that kind of are perfect for recreation, but not so much for, for getting down to your local shops. Uh, Building entrances is another one related to pedestrians. If you're going A to B, rather than just routing to you know, this, the centoid of that polygon or, or trying to work out which edge of the building is relevant, actually knowing where the entrance is is really good for, for, for large buildings. But there's more than just that. We need to think more broadly when it comes to pedestrian data. How many people have seen this You know, running or walking on the local trail? Um, this is, I don't know how well you can see it. It's probably what you think it is. Um, you know, when, when your four-legged friend does this in the middle of the track, um, it can be very annoying. And that's why it's great the city of Folsom also has, uh, they've provided dog excrement, um, bags for dog excrement. So <laughs> OpenStreetMap is a great community. We have tags for this, we, you can map it. This is another example of something that pedestrians care about um, that, that we can have on the map. And so, you, you, you can know where this is, you can map the trash bag um, location so that you can get a trash bag when you do, your dog does this. You can pick it up and then just leave it there. <laughs> Super frustrating. <laughs> so um, in, in all seriousness, I wanted to map this particular area, the place where I first moved to in the US, just a temporary accommodation. Um, it's a shopping area in the south part of Folsom. and. Uh, near Highway 50 for the, those that have driven from San Francisco to Tahoe. And uh, there was really no pedestrian data in OpenStreetMap. It was mapped really well as far as like the road network, but again, no sidewalks, no crosswalks, nothing like that. So I started um, mapping that. There's a, a closer look at uh, what, what was there and before I started mapping. Routing actually worked really well. So credit to the um, open route service from Heidelberg University it actually just tries to work out like using the underlying road data, what would it be like for a pedestrian? It seemed to work fairly well. Um, I guess it's not always true for larger, for longer routes, but this worked well. Graph Hopper worked well. So credit to both of those routing engines. Um, but I wasn't interested in the routing. I'm interested in the actual pedestrian infrastructure. And so I started with Bing imagery. Um, which is great, so thank you Bing, thank you Microsoft. Um, that's great imagery to, to work with. You could actually see 
if you look at this image, you can see the, um, the crosswalks very clearly. You can see the sidewalks clearly. You can even see like tactile paving in some scenarios. Um, so using ID or Rapid, you can map that out fairly well. Sidewalks were starting to appear once, once I was mapping this, which was great. But the problem is that you have some tree cover, you have building awnings that block out a lot of the views um, uh, that you would see from a satellite or aerial image. Um, and so you had to do more field work to, to get the data I needed. So that's where I looked at Mapillary. Mapillary is a tool for street level imagery. I think Antonio mentioned it before, so thank you for that. Um, the coverage there wasn't great initially. Um, so uh, I decided to go out with a 360 camera and capture more. This is the GoPro Max, which takes a photo every two seconds, which is really good when you're going at like a slower speed. It's actually good enough for this purpose. Ironically, I was driving through the area to map pedestrian infrastructure, but that's the nature, <laughs> the nature of this place. Um, really good, like in terms of the setup, the front lens worked really well here. The back lens, like I didn't have it mounted high enough on my vehicle, so the back lens wasn't so great, but still incredibly useful. I had the iPhone, um, oh, that's just a, a look at the, the full view. And I had the iPhone mounted in the front to capture like higher detail. This is good for like building, uh, I, I guess like the, the name of a building um, and addresses, things like that, that might be useful for pedestrian routing. More 360 imagery, you can see like very clearly here, even on the right where there's a building awning that blocks things from satellite image, you can start to map that out. Um, with Mapper, you can go direct to Rapid or ID Editor to actually start editing this. So here we're looking at Rapid. You can see um, there's not too much like ML uh, predictions here. Most of it's been added already, but you've got the street level imagery, which is great for the building entrance. So we can add that here on the, on the building polygon. And the Mapillary detects crosswalks as well, which is a great starting point. So you've captured imagery, you wait a few hours for the crosswalks to be generated, and then you can use that as a starting point to click on them, see which images they're being detected in, go to OpenStreetMap and add them in. And so here's an example of like the pixel segmentation of the crosswalk itself. You can go in and add that where it didn't exist previously. Other really useful tools for mobile mapping include uh, GoMap. I really love this tool. I'm actually hoping to meet the developer if he's here at State of the Map US. Um, huge fanboy of his. Um, this is Bing Aerial Imagery again, toggled. Uh, this is the dog, um, I always struggle to say this, the bag that you, know, you get to pick up your dog feces. Um, so you can add this when you're on the go with GoMap. Um, really useful for nodes, more so than Waze. Some people like to add Waze for pedestrian infrastructure when they're walking. I prefer to do that at home, um, but this is good for nodes, things that might be related to a pedestrian, um, to pedestrian infrastructure. Vespucci, same sort of deal here, um, great for mobile mapping on Android. You also have Street Complete. So once you've done all this, you've added like the base layer of coverage, you've maybe added a, a, some additional data with Mapillary or, or GoMap or Vespucci. Street Complete is great for, um, for Quest, it's fun. You can do additional things like, does it have tactile pavement? Does it, is it um, lit at night? What's the surface type? All useful information. Um, so Street Complete is, is great and fun, and apparently also um, really good for, for date night. This was a, a blog post that said it was a really good night out with her, with her partner, so keep that one up your sleeve. Um, in terms of our display maps, particularly on, on Facebook, like if you're thinking about a Facebook place, that's where you'll be able to see some of the, the, the pedestrian infrastructure you've added or, or the, that you've mapped out in OpenStreetMap. Probably a bit hard to see here, but um, that's a, a restaurant in Folsom near where I was living and you can kind of get a better idea of how to get there on foot. Mapbox streets, um, again, quite, kind of hard to see pedestrian infrastructure on their default layer, but if you zoom in, you can see it there. But really, like, what, what's the point of all this? The, the point of all this, hopefully, is to actually get better pedestrian infrastructure. And the good thing about the city of Folsom is that they, they have a plan. Um, that's, <laughs> governments are good at that. Um, the first one was done with a consultancy called Kimley Horn, and this consultancy put together the plan in 2014 that had a lot of um, goals around people walking conveniently to their destination, uh, feeling safe walking, uh, facilities are provided for people of all age groups, disabilities, um, so it's more people can be more easily mobile. And then there's a huge commercial aspect to this. Like, I think a lot of cities have proven that actually when you make a city easy to walk around, 
people spend more money. They're more willing to like just go from store to store rather than go back to their car and drive to the next place. Um, and so it's really good to see that they have this plan. They actually just released the active transportation plan, which is a spring, um, a plan for this spring. It's a PDF document, which you can go through and you can tell them exactly where you want things to be improved, but it's not built around a map. And I think um, some of the previous talks showed like how useful it is when you actually have a map as, as your central fra um, framework for discussion, particularly around emergency services. Same is true with government. They think around maps. And so if we can communicate to them using, like showing them what exists on the ground currently and what doesn't, um, we can help. So in terms of Folsom, it's about the size, it's slightly larger than Manhattan, obviously a lot less population, just to keep in mind in terms of density and, and moving from A to B. Um, it is probably harder than Manhattan to, to get to the shops. Um, your local bodega, flat white, is usually a drive away rather than a walk, walk away. But um, downtown area is quite walkable, uh, but there's a lot to be done just to make it easier to go to you know, the grocery or to go get a bottle of wine or to go um, to the doctor. All these things, unfortunately, are, are very drive centric. So here are a few quick maps before I wrap up. This is this Folsom City Government, um, what they've determined is important. So they've mapped out key pieces of infrastructure, mostly to get from A to B, um, signage that needs to be improved, and then some of the highest priority districts. Um, there's still a lot that's missing here, and that's why I'm excited about OpenStreetMap as a tool to go out and, and map this um, and, and to show them specifically where it needs improvement. So in terms of the steps, ID, Rapid, and Jossum for the base level of coverage, Maplory street level imagery for the bits that uh, are missing in between, GoMap for, for nodes and Vespucci for nodes that might be related to pedestrian infrastructure, and then lastly, uh, Street Complete for, for date night. So hopefully that's somewhat useful for you. Um, I would love to chat more. I, I heard there's people who are really passionate about pedestrian infrastructure. I, I think there is like acknowledgement that this is an underfunded level um, in terms of a government's budget generally. And, and it's common around the world, as, as I talked about last year, it's common that these things aren't funded um, as well as they should be. So thanks for listening. Thanks for the State of the Map organisers. Um, if you want to connect with us, we have Map with AI Twitter handle. Um, we have the Maplery Twitter handle as well as a Facebook group, Maplery Worldwide, which some of you are already in. Um, you can connect with me personally here. And uh, looking forward to chatting offline about pedestrian infrastructure. Thank you.